That's right. And joining us to discuss the topic of uh, Wednesday's vote on that EU migration pact is Mr. Wojciech Wobodziński, columnist from La Stampa. Good morning and welcome to TVP World. Uh, so now we're going to start by having a look at a soundbite by the Polish Prime Minister. So let's take a look at that. Mechanizm relokacji tak czy inaczej. Poland will not agree to the relocation mechanism. One way or another, we will see what the final version of this pact will be. I have the capacity to build certain alliances against the mechanism, and it will not apply in Poland, I hope. You know, now there is also a problem because the European elections are approaching, and those who were involved in the creation of this migration pact are very determined. I don't rule out that after the European elections, the political structure of the parliament will also change a bit, and we will be able to return to this topic differently. But I want to reassure everyone, we will find ways, because we already have it worked out in our heads, that even if this package comes into force, more or less in the shape in which it was approved today in parliament, we will defend Poland against the relocation mechanism. So now, based on what we just heard, I wanted to ask, what does this relocation mechanism look like and how can Poland defend uh, the rest of the European Union from this relocation mechanism? I mean, the, the stratagem of Donald Tusk right now is to wait for, for results of the future elections. He's uh, saying that uh, after a new equip in the uh, European Parliament will set up, uh, there might be some room for renegotiation of this, of this mechanism right now. In countries have right to opt out from this by, by paying around 20,000 euros, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for, every, uh, for every immigrant that they are not willing to take from another country, thus showing some solidarity with them. And uh, so right now we are seeing that uh, the, um, the populist right narrative of yesterday right now is being incapacitated by the central liberal parties such as uh, civic platform of Donald Tusk. So uh, if the European Parliament is going to change, we might see even, even there some, some uh, space for renegotiation with the new actors that weren't there yesterday. Right, but um, also now Polish Prime Minister is not the only one to have a firm stance against the EU's new uh, migration pact. For instance, now Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico has rejected it as well. Um, and also Minister of uh, Foreign and European Affairs Juraj Blanar, in fact, he um, rejected firmly the new uh, European migration and asylum policy. Um, so we do see that now Slovakia, for instance, now joins other Eastern countries in showing their discontent. Having that in mind, do you think that perhaps we see a, a rift within European Union and that might actually change on change the way how the a migration policy will look like in the future? I mean, uh, we can also add the, the party uh, of the party from Austria, which is which is doing the same. So this is uh, this is a rift, uh, 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 a huge earthquake actually, because while most of the media focus on on the fact that uh, there are left-wing parties and far-right parties or whatever uh, who are um, against, but from different reasons. Uh, uh, now we are okay. saying, we're not talking about the far yeah, right. Yeah, we are not saying, and either far left. So, you know, it's, it's, it's Social it's Democratic right. Party and the party of Donald Tusk is pretty center, center right, center left, who, who knows now. But uh, so, so we are seeing a, a, a rift that is not yet uh, described and it's a geographical rift for me because we are seeing uh, countries from Slovenia to Slovakia, Austria, Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic. Uh, who are united against this, and there are no uh, ideological uh, links between them, just good geographical ones. So, that's, so that brings me to my next question, this, this geographical issue on the matter, because recently also the Polish Prime Minister has said that there are signs indicating that Lukashenko's regime will once again, uh, right about now, try to use illegal migrants to destabilize the European Union. So how is all this connected? I mean, uh, with Lukashenko, we, we never know. I, I think that the person behind him, Putin, uh, already showed us that uh, he's willing to, to risk his relations with Finland, with Norway, uh, by using the same methods as the uh, Belarusian regime uh, f through his hands uh, used against Poland right now. So, uh, 
I think those uh, those methods are right now uh, mainstream of of Russian policy towards uh, countries of European Union because this is some kind of of blackmailing us. You know, uh, we are proud to be compassionate, to be um, all about civil uh, civil rights uh, and humanitarian uh, laws. Uh, however, this kind of uh, of maneuvering, uh, very sneaky, I would say, uh, was wasn't there, you know, yesterday. So we have to get used to it and uh, create a new mechanism, actually. So that's what we are seeing right now. So what do you think? What kind of mechanism are we talking about now, and practically? Because. Um, Migration pact and let's say migration as an issue has been well here for almost a decade since 2015, since um, now the escalation of the war in Syria. And back then, um, of course, now it raised some questions about, of course, we have to be you now show solidarity within Europe and help all those in need, but it has to be regulated. So, do you think that perhaps now we are um, facing a situation where, because we do know that now with the new migration pact, now there will be new laws implemented so that those who cannot be granted asylum well, will be um, sent back to their country of origin. But do you think that now we'll see more regulations on top of that now because of uh, how, um, let's say, the Eastern Bloc is, is behaving towards um, this, this pact? I, I think it's not only about Eastern Bloc, actually, but also about uh, France, for example. In France, we are seeing a situation in which uh, Le Pen's party is uh, already 15% uh, on top of Macron. So the the whole political landscape uh, is changing, and uh, I think also parties from from the right, from from Western, more Western countries such as uh, France, will will come to the rescue of of, uh, of European Central European parties, even though they are social democratic or liberal. So. Uh, I think there, there are going to be a, a huge change right now. This, this regulation is, um, is just a compromise, but nobody likes it. So it's going to change in the long run, I guess. All right, so still much remains to be seen in the future. Mr. Wojciech Wobodziński, columnist La Stampa, thank you very much for thank your insight you. here this morning.